Christian Prudhomme has been the race director of the Tour de France since 2007, overseeing a period of great change and expansion as the Tour spread to new parts of the world and touched new cycling fans. At the start of the 105th edition of this famous old race, we asked the man in charge of one of the biggest sporting spectacles on the planet how it comes together, what a day in his life entails and how you balance preserving great traditions with attracting new faces to the sport. Christian Prudhomme, the route of the 2018 Tour is ambitious and modern. It celebrates cycling legend Bernard Hinault, who 40 years ago won the Tour de France in his first participation in 1978. The variety of the stages this year will be ideal for attackers. A lack of concentration from the favorites could cost them precious time during the first days of the race on the plains with windy conditions as they encounter the climbs at Array and the Amur de Britannia climb, the latter of which will be done twice. Saturday, the 7th of July, Norm Audier and Lyle to Fontenay le Comte, 201 kilometers, a flat opening stage following the coastline which will expose the peloton to crosswinds from the Atlantic Ocean and is likely to end in a bunch sprint. Sunday, the 8th of July, Muller on Saint Germain to La Roche sur Yon, 182.5 kilometers, a route through the Venti countryside with another opportunity for the sprinters to clinch a stage victory. Monday, the 9th of July, Cholet, team time trial, 35.5 kilometers, a team trial around Cholet which will give an early indication as to the quality and depth of the leading groups. Tuesday, the 10th of July, Le Ballet de Sarso, 195 kilometers, the visit to Brittany could be the moment for the dominant sprinter of the tour to make his mark. Wednesday, the 11th of July, Lorient to Campere, 204.5 kilometers, a tricky stage to Finister full of narrow roads and short, sharp climbs. Thursday, the 12th of July, Brest, Mer de Britannia, Gerladen, 181 kilometers, the Mer de Britannia will be scaled twice in the final kilometers in the toughest test of the first week. Friday the 13th of July, Fougeres to Chartres, 231 kilometers, this is a long stage which invites a breakaway but is likely to won by a sprinter. Saturday the 14th of July, Drew to Amiens Metropole, 181 kilometers, the sprinters could be scuppered by the Normandy crosswinds, conditions will be crucial. Sunday the 15th of July, Air Citadel to Rubai, 156.5 km, a testing route consisting of 22 km of cobblestone split into 15 treacherous section which could claim a few casualties. Tuesday the 17th of July, Annecy to Le Grand Bornand, 158.5 km, a rare trip off the asphalt and onto a gravel road is likely to puncture a few tires. Wednesday, the 18th of July, Albertville to La Rosier, 108.5 kilometers, a first serious taste of the mountains, albeit on a very short stage. Thursday, the 19th of July, Borg Saint Maurice Les Arc du Alpe d'Huez, 175.5 kilometers, a summit finish on top of the Tour de France's most iconic climb, Alpe d'Huez. Friday, the 20th of July, Borg Doisens to Valence, 169.5 km, again Lure Day after three stages in the mountains and one for the sprinters to contest. Saturday, the 21st of July, St. Paul Trois Chateau de Mendes, 188 km, a stage with four categorized climbs including a sharp climb to Mend which will hurt tired legs. Sunday, the 22nd of July, Mill out of Carcassonne, 181.5 kilometers, another undulating day ripe for a breakaway. Tuesday, the 24th of July, Carcassonne to Bagnères de Luchon, 218 kilometers, a long and draining stage with three ascents in the second half to bring out the best in the elite climbers. Wednesday, the 25th of July, Bagnères de Luchon to Saint Larry Solon, 65 kilometers the shortest regular stage for 30 years and yet a brutal one, finishing on the steep Col du Portet which could prove decisive. Thursday the 26th of July, Tree sur Base de Pau, 171 km, some respite for the climbers after three draining days, and another chance for the sprinters to shine. Friday the 27th of July, Lourdes to Larens, 200.5 km, the famous aspin combination in the middle of this stage makes it perfect for a yellow jersey assault. 
Saturday the 28th of July, St. P.E. Acuity Sir Nivelle to Espelet Individual Time Trial, 31 km, a time trial with enough short climbs, including the final, called du Penodietta, to upset the traditional time trialist. Sunday the 29th of July, Pools to Paris, 116 km, the procession into the Champs-Élysées for those that have made it, and one final opportunity for the power riders. Saturday the 7th of July, Norm Audier and Lyle to Fontenay le Comte, 201 km, a flat opening stage following the coastline which will expose the peloton to crosswinds from the Atlantic Ocean and is likely to end in a bunch sprint. Sunday the 8th of July, Muller on Saint Germain to La Roche sur Yon, 182.5 km, a route through the Venti countryside with another opportunity for the sprinters to clinch a stage victory. Monday the 9th of July, Cholet, team time trial, 35.5 km, a team trial around Cholet which will give an early indication as to the quality and depth of the leading groups. Tuesday the 10th of July, Le Balle de Sarso, 195 km, the visit to Brittany could be the moment for the dominant sprinter of the tour to make his mark. Wednesday the 11th of July, Lorient to Campere, 204.5 km, a tricky stage to Finister full of narrow roads and short, sharp climbs. Thursday the 12th of July, Brest, Mer de Bretagne Gerladen, 181 km, the Mer de Bretagne will be scaled twice in the final kilometers in the toughest test of the first week. Friday the 13th of July, Fougeres to Chartres, 231 km, this is a long stage which invites a breakaway but is likely to won by a sprinter. Saturday the 14th of July, Route to Amiens Metropole, 181 km, the sprinters could be scuppered by the Normandy crosswinds, conditions will be crucial. Sunday the 15th of July, Air Citadel to Rubai, 156.5 km, a testing route consisting of 22 km of cobblestone split into 15 treacherous section which could claim a few casualties. Tuesday the 17th of July, Annecy to La Grande Bourne and 158.5 km, a rare trip off the asphalt and onto a gravel road is likely to puncture a few tires. Wednesday, the 18th of July, Albertville to La Rosier, 108.5 km, a first serious taste of the mountains, albeit on a very short stage. Thursday, the 19th of July, Borg St. Maurice Les Arc du Alpe d'Huez, 175.5 km, a summit finish on top of the Tour de France's most iconic climb, Alpe d'Huez. Friday the 20th of July, Borg Doisens to Valence, 169.5 km, a Gendler day after three stages in the mountains and one for the sprinters to contest. Saturday the 21st of July, St. Paul Trois Chateau de Mende, 188 km, a stage with four categorized climbs including a sharp climb to Mende which will hurt tired legs. Sunday the 22nd of July, Milau to Carcassonne, 181.5 km, another undulating day ripe for a breakaway. Tuesday the 24th of July, Carcassonne to Bagnères de Luchon, 218 km, a long and draining stage with three ascents in the second half to bring out the best in the elite climbers. Wednesday the 25th of July, Bagnères de Luchon to St. Larry Solon, 65 km the shortest regular stage for 30 years and yet a brutal one, finishing on the steep Col du Portet which could prove decisive. Thursday the 26th of July, Tree surveys to Pau, 171 km, some respite for the climbers after three draining days, and another chance for the sprinters to shine. Friday the 27th of July, Lords to Larens, 200.5 km, the famous aspen termala combination in the middle of this stage makes it perfect for a yellow jersey assault. Saturday the 28th of July, St. P.E. Acuity Sir Nivelle to Espelette individual time trial, 31 km, a time trial with enough short climbs, including the final, Col du Penodietta, to upset the traditional time trialists. Sunday the 29th of July, Hules to Paris, 116 km, the procession into the Champs-Élysées for those that have made it, and one final opportunity for the power riders. There are then twists and turns to anticipate in the 20 km of cobbles, the most in 30 years, which the riders will have to negotiate to reach Rubai.
In the mountains, there will be numerous chances to create a surprise. The first appearance of the Col du Piari Acute, the shortest stage in recent history and the Col de Portet to name a few. How do you select the stage cities and how many years in advance? CP, we receive between 250 and 300 applications each year. We have close relationships with officials with whom it would be impossible to make this happen. When we design a tour race route, we try to cover all the regions in France at least once every five or six years. With my right-hand man, Pierre Thuo, and with the sporting director, Thierry Galvenu, and his team, we will tirelessly continue to look for places and those intangibles that make the race exciting, while respecting the sites that have made the tour the legend that it is. From Head's list of leading Tour de France contenders for the past few years we have varied the stages as much as possible, by the length and also the profile. have adjusted the distance, alternated finish stages either at mountain tops or at the bottom of a descent, featured new climbs, added rolling sections to the flat stages and brought back routes on cobbles or dust roads like at Gliers, this year. CP, I wake up at 6.30 in the morning. Then I have a hearty breakfast while I read the daily regional press, Lake Eep newspaper and the day's AFP bulletins. I review the day's agenda with my team. Sometimes, I give my first interview of the day in the hotel where I spent the night. I then head to the start village about three and a half hours before the start of the race. I do more interviews with the local and international media. I then meet with the local officials and authorities during the daily official ceremony. I can have some quiet time in an office that is reserved for me and the main directors before taking care of other requests along with Cyril Tricart, the external relations manager. The time to decide which guests will ride in the race vehicle, two per days, with my driver Giles Manion, two-time French national time trial champion, and Thierry Galvenu, the Tour de France sporting director. Schultz and Scott prepare to take the start at Stage 3, AFP, Getty Images, during the stage, I take on my role as the Tour de France director as well as accompany well-known public personalities that we host each year, such as the President of France. Once I have crossed the finish line, I take part in the post-race protocol ceremony at the foot of the podium and answer the last questions of the day from the media in the mixed zone, for television and radio, and sometimes in the media center, for the print media. I meet with local authorities often in the company of Bernard Thavnet, who is an ambassador of the race that he won in 1975 and 1977. Sometimes I eat dinner twice, because I never turn down an invitation. What changes are you most proud about after 10 years as the director of the Tour de France? CP, we don't talk about things in terms of pride, but I am particularly pleased that with the teams run by Thierry Galvenu. We have been able to make the races more uncertain by including new challenges, finding climbs like the Col de Portet this year or the two ascensions of Alpe d'Huez in the same stage during the 100th anniversary edition of the Tour de France. Even on the flat stages early in the Tour, while waiting for the mountains, we've included windy coastal sections or cobblestone sectors. Everything you need to know for the Tour de France 2018 I am very proud of the ASO. Teams that adapt to every situation and that allow us to be daring in our choice of stage routes. Over the past few years we have scheduled Mont Blanc, Marseille and this year the Basque Country just 24 hours prior to the final stage finishing on the Champs Elysees, which represents a massive challenge for a caravan of 4,500 people and 2,500 vehicles. The Tour de France is the biggest bicycle race in the world, it is also history, geography, culture, and discovery. Most importantly, it is 3,500 kilometers of happy people having a great time. How do you go about attracting new spectators on the road without losing sight of the heritage and traditional character of the race? CP, the tourism should remain a very important communication vehicle for the heritage, culture, history and geography of the territories it visits. At the same time we have to use all the resources that offer modernity via social media and data compilation that allows for better understanding the race to attract a younger fan base. 
But above all, it must remain a celebration, a celebration in the towns, villages and in the countryside. And when we see the pride with which the residents of the staged cities host the Tour de France, we have no concerns about the presence of spectators at the side of the roads. Look at what happened in 2014 in Yorkshire. It is not every day that the public has the chance to see a bicycle race pass by. And not only did they come out and make the stages an unbroken ribbon of celebration, they also now turn up systematically when the world's cycling stars return to ride in the tour of Yorkshire that we now organize. Follow the independent sport on Instagram here, for all of the best images, videos and stories from around the sporting world.